Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist, and we bring this podcast to you every Wednesday as a veterinarian, as a technician, as a dentistry team to help you be even better in veterinary dentistry in your practice. We're sponsored and partnered today with the Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. If you're interested in being among the best anywhere in general practice as a team in veterinary dentistry, I invite you to request an invitation. Just go to ivdi.org slash inv, like invitation, first three letters, inv. So ivdi. International Veterinary Dentistry Institute, ivdi.org slash INV, and we'll get you the information that you need. Is it okay to do dental radiographs in lateral position? And how long does it take for bupivacaine to kick in before proceeding? Um, good question, Jeannie. And my answer is this. If you are able to do radiographs and get that, um, that full mouth series done within the goal time frame, uh, five to 10 minutes for a small dog, 10 to 15 minutes for a large dog. I'm absolutely okay with you accomplishing that. As long as we're following that workflow where we get that diagnosis first and then move forward from there. So if you're not struggling, if you're comfortable taking them in lateral position, then absolutely that is perfectly okay. For those folks that are struggling, having trouble with troubleshooting, or trying to get those radiographs done um, and under pressure and, and having a hard time doing that, it tends to be easier and there's a less steeper learning curve when we do x-rays in dorsal and ventral recumbency. How long for bupivacaine? It used to be where we thought it was upwards of 20 minutes. That's why we would use it with uh, in conjunction with lidocaine. Uh, we're now finding that it kicks in most likely closer to three to five minute range. And so we're just using bupivacaine all by itself. As well as the longevity of bupivacaine, we originally thought was closer to the six to eight hour range. We're now finding that it's probably anywhere from 24 to 72 hours in some patients. The majority of patients, 24 hours. Um, that wanes as we get through those three days, patient to patient, but the majority of the patients, it's at least 24 hours. So we don't need to add a narcotic like we used to in years past to prolong the efficacy of that. It lasts long all by itself. So again, that's a little um, updated change with regards to uh, bupivacaine. Do you recommend doing dental rads on young patients undergoing spay and neuter to catch early signs of disease? Um, spay and neuter patients are usually under that one year mark. We typically recommend 12 to 18 months. It's unlikely we're going to see changes at the four, five, six, or eight month range. Um, but if we're over that one year mark and they're coming in for spay and neuter, and I've been out of general practice so long, I don't even know what age we do spays and neuters anymore. Um, but typically the first uh, cleaning and assessment with emphasis on assessment in small breed dogs is done around that uh, year to 18 months. Larger breeds is typically 24 months and a cat is recommendation is at a year. If there is a delay in treatment, maybe due to cost, is it okay to do pulse therapy in the biotics and pain meds? Very, very good question, Catherine. I'm glad you asked this. Um, and yeah, we absolutely recommend pain medication because we want to make sure that these patients are comfortable until we can get them treated. And that's not, um, that's not uh, you know, an out of the question uh, treatment plan. These patients, uh, periodontal disease is a slow progression. So if we need to delay for two to three months, um, it's not going to change very much as far as the treatment plan goes or the progression of that disease but that patient may be uncomfortable. So we want to make sure that, you know, they're, uh, the owner isn't, you know, having anxiety at home because they can't do the procedure and the patient is uncomfortable. So we can do pain meds. 
A word about pulse therapy antibiotics. That was a, a protocol that came out, oh, probably 20 years ago. And that was uh, four days of every month, uh, typically clindamycin, uh, for four days every month. We're now finding that that protocol is contraindicated because there were, um, we were finding resistant strains of bacteria were being created with that pulse therapy. So antibiotics really have um, little benefit um, prior to getting all that infection out of there, more important for pain meds, unless we have active infection, like a suborbital swelling in that, you know, that pus or that open wound, or we have a, a draining tract, um, any swelling, anything like that. Yeah, we're gonna do a short course of antibiotics, typically five to seven days, um, and repeat if needed, if the swelling comes back, or, um, or we've got a, you know, an open abscess. Uh, but typically we don't do antibiotics prior to treating these patients. More important to um, manage pain, absolutely. All right. Do you recommend starting pain meds sedatives prior to the patient's appointment to help with pain anxiety to make their visit easier? Yeah, if you're in a position to be able to do that, absolutely. Um, most of our patients are referral uh, new patients. We don't typically get to see them prior to their procedure. But if, um, if these patients are, um, have a lot of anxiety, you know, trazodone is wonderful, gabapentin is wonderful, and uh, does not interfere with, uh, with anesthesia. So we absolutely recommend making these patients as comfortable as possible and making the whole experience as fear-free as possible for better client compliance to get these patients to come back as they need to, um, sometimes more frequently than others. When you call the client and they can't afford all the treatments, uh, you mentioned that you finish up what they can afford, send them back with pain management, and have them come back in three months. At that time, do you complete the outstanding treatments and do another set of RADS profi? Um, <clears throat> we don't need to repeat the radiographs. Um, we just took them three months ago. They're not gonna change a whole lot. Um, so that's primarily for the treatment plan itself. Um, yeah, we may need to clean the teeth again, but we're not going to charge them again if we just did it in three months. Our main goal is to be able to have them get that treatment plan completed uh, within, their, uh, within their budget. And so we always want to have a, a plan B. And um, Shannon asked what, um, if they can't afford all the extractions, what teeth you recommend extraction, extracting. Um, and it's primarily those teeth that are mobile, uh, where there's uh, the most severe and advanced infection. Um, we may um, forego any root planing or periodontal therapy because we can um, do that with our ultrasonic scaler and we're cleaning those teeth, hopefully subgingivally with a perio tip, that should be done. And so that treatment doesn't necessarily need to be done that day. Um, it's more or less getting all of that cleaned out and then getting the, the most infected, um, the most uh, severely affected teeth extracted. And um, sometimes we'll close flaps, sometimes we won't, especially if we know that they're coming back in, in three months. If we can close flaps easily, still staying within the budget, then we'll absolutely do that. So you kind of have to fudge it and, um, and try and work with these owners as much as possible um, to get these patients treated and let them know that, again, what we're doing today is still going to make them feel so much better, but there's still mo more work that needs to be done, and we can do that in that, that two or three month uh, window down the road because things aren't going to progress that much. Um, again, how, what, how do we prior prioritize teeth? Um, again, the most, uh, effectly, uh, most severely affected by perio. Coming to a specialty clinic, Julie asked, the client should realize there is an increased cost. Do you suggest uh, the client apply for care credit prior to the procedure? Absolutely. Care credit has been our friend. I mean, we are going to be significantly more, as most boarded dentists are and most boarded specialists in any discipline. They're going to be significantly more than a general practitioner. And so if they do not have all of that disposable income, um, then definitely um, care credit is, is uh, certainly an asset 
And if they're already approved for that, all the better. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like more information about the Veterinary Dental Practitioners Program, please submit to request an invitation at ivdi.org slash INV.